Hello, I'm going to go through uh, creating a data set for speaker identification and fine tuning a speaker identification model using our library speaker box. Um, so let's go over the problem or like what this library tries to help accomplish. Um, generally, let's say that you have some collection of audio files and you want to be able to identify within each of those audio files um, the specific speaker that is speaking at any given time, right? So let's say that you have six audio files, like uh, given the example here, where zero, one, two, three, four, five wave. Um, and within each of these, there might be some or all speakers present, right? So in zero dot wave, it might have the full set, but in one dot wave, it might have just B, D, and E uh, as like speaker IDs. Um, and you generally want to like train a model which will be able to classify and identify portions of audio as one of those known speakers um, in future recordings. Um, so if we have, if we're trying to identify the speakers Bob and Sally, and we have some audio file, we want to be able to say at the 10 second mark to the 12 second mark, Bob is speaking. At the 13 second mark to the 18 second mark, Sally is speaking, and so on. Um, and so this library uh, specifically helps try to cre helps you create a new speaker identification data set and then train a model using that created data set. Um, additionally, you can evaluate the model using this library. Um, so this library is kind of constructed as uh, a series of tools um, to help you do that. Uh, and one of the ways that we accomplish that is kind of through this workflow method. So let's say that you're starting with that kind of raw data directory. Um, how can you kind of start the process of quickly creating a data set that you can then, again, quickly annotate? Um, so the first step uh, to do all this is diarization um, which is where you can take an audio file and in an unsupervised manner, try to cluster portions of audio together based off of a speaker's voice. Um, so this is unsupervised, so you aren't going to get uh, like the properly identified labels, um, but you still will get kind of a nice clustering of audio uh, portions that sound similar to, to each other or speakers that sound similar to each other. Um, the hope is that each collection is a single speaker uh, classified together. Um, uh, so I'm going to kind of go through this whole process, starting with diarization, and then move into kind of cleaning and annotation, uh, finally into training a, a new model and evaluating that model um, in this video. Um, and I'm going to do it uh, on a data set that I have created um, that is uh, specifically, it's, it's eight uh, audio files. Um, they are all the audio, the um, audio uh, extracts from West Wing clips, uh, West Wing like video clips. So I just took a West Wing video clip and only uh, just stripped the audio from it. Um, and so every single one of these is a, is a, you know, a different West Wing clip and I can, you know, I can look, I can listen to them and uh, it's just a, it's a West Wing, it's a West Wing clip. Um, and for this example, I'm only trying to label three specific characters, the characters of President Bartlett, Leo McGarry, and Charlie Young. Um, there are plenty of other characters in the West Wing, but just for this example, I'm only trying to label three. Um, I also, in this directory, have, I'm going to open VS Code now. Uh, in this directory, I have a requirements file, which just has speaker box. It has JupyterLab, which I'm going to be using to actually go through the, this kind of workflow of generating a model. And then I just have uh, TQDM and IPy widgets for um, progress bars. Um, uh, and um, so I have gone ahead and made a Conda environment with this, uh, like these dependencies installed. Um, and so I can go ahead and uh, start up JupyterLab. Um, and we can see what's going to happen. So in JupyterLab, it should start and it'll go to um, this, like my, my kind of notebook that pre-exists. But um, this code entirely comes from the first step of this process, which is diarization. Um, so we give two options of either diarizing a single file or diarizing all the files in the directory. And that's what this code is. Uh, is we are doing the diarize all the files in a, in a directory. In this case, we're diarizing all the files from the data directory. Um, specifically, we're looking for uh, wave formatted files. Um, we are then storing all of these kind of portions of audio into a directory called diarized audio, um, and specifically a subdirectory within that new directory um, with that file's name. So we'll, you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. But I want to go over and like, read read through this uh, these directions um, specifically. Uh, before you actually do this step, you need to, um, you know, follow follow these uh, these links and accept the user conditions and create an access token. So um, 
Normally, I've already done this process, but normally if it's your first time, you might need to log in or create a Hugging Face account and then visit this page. And when you visit this page, there'll be a box um, somewhere that says like accept using conditions and you should accept those conditions. Um, finally, creating a token is just like any other kind of user access token. Um, Hugging Face has their own. And so I'm going, I, I have made a token already and I, uh, this is the token here. Um, and I have put it into this um, example right here. Um, instead of right on, on the readme, it just has kind of token from Hugging Face as the, as the value there. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start this process um, and we should see what happens shortly. So uh, this is going to run and it's going to diarize and kind of find those clusters of audio where speakers sound similar and hopefully each cluster is a single speaker. Um, and it's going to place them in a new directory. We just saw a new directory appear um, and I will open it in a second. So this new diarized audio uh, directory appears. Remember that these all have names, these audio files all have like names like Butterball, Chili Gangs and so on. Um, and so if I go in here, we can see that there is a subdirectory called Butterball. And within this subdirectory, there are three directories with unlabeled speakers. Um, specifically in each of these, there are a bunch of uh, portions of audio with what is hopefully a single speaker. Um, and so our job now is to annotate all of these directories. And the way that we propose this in the readme um, in this kind of next part of cleaning is to just go through and you know, rename these speaker directories with their unique identifier or their label. Um, so I'm gonna start that process. So um, the best way that I have found to do it is to just open this directory with whatever media player that you have installed. Um, I use VLC. And uh, I quickly just can able to like parse through these audio files. I listen and just like I know the characters that I'm trying to label, so I can quickly identify them. This this first uh, directory actually is a character that we don't uh, want to label, so I'm just going to delete this directory entirely. So I'm going to move to trash, and then we just do the same thing over again with all the rest of them. And this next one is a different character, so I am going to label it. I'm just going to rename the directory. So I'm going to name this uh, Bartlett. And I'm going to open this next one. Yeah, about it. As I thought Toby might be playing. Yeah. I need this. President needs to get his grenade right now. Why not? And I was just in a bad mood. Great. So this is. Um, I'm actually going to listen to that again. Make sure. Yeah, about it. As I thought Toby might be. Maybe I am too. Yeah. President needs to... This sounds like Leo, so I'm going to rename this Leo. Great. Um, and then I'm going to just keep going on, right? So I keep going down to the next one. So let's go into this one, and we just keep uh, annotating. I'll try to be fast. And this is President Bartlett again. So Bartlett. And let's see what this one is. And this is Leo again. So let's just rename that. Leo, and we keep going down the list. There are multiple speakers in here, and actually none of them are the ones that we are interested in, so I'm going to delete that um, again entirely, and I'm going to try this one instead. And this is Charlie, so I'll just rename this Charlie. Great, we're moving quickly. So let's go to this one. This is a character that we aren't interested in, so I will delete it. This is Charlie. Interesting. This this is also Charlie. So let's um, that that happens sometimes. So I'm going to quickly double check and make sure that if these are both Charlie, then I can move all this audio into the same directory. Hmm. So actually, I think just this first audio clip is uh, just this first audio clip is one we want to keep, and the others are probably misclassified. So I'm going to move it into here. Um, oops, I forgot to save it. Copy and paste. And then the rest of the, you know, I can delete these other two. Um, and so now if I listen to this, it should be a better set. Yeah, that sounds better. So now I'll label this entire directory as Charlie. 
And I'm going to assume that this other directory is Bartlett. Yep, that's Bartlett. Just Bartlett. Great. And let's keep going. Oops. This has two people. And this first one is Bartlett again. And the second one should be Leo McGarry. Are you president of the United States or delivering the state of the union? That is Leo. To Leo. Let's keep going. Did you know that two thousand years ago, free of the fear of military? That is Bartlett. So let's rename that Bartlett. And that is that is Leo. Great. Job in the White House as president. That is not a person we're interested in, so we can delete it. And and this is Bartlett. And I think this should be Charlie. Hello, this is Charlie. The president did very well. Great job. <laughs> I'm getting him now. Yes, that is Charlie. Great. And the last one that we need to do this for is here. And let's. Um, hey, Conklin. You did it again. How are the Great Epidemic Accords? Sorry? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. And this is Charlie again. Great. And that's Bartlett. And this last one this is, outrageous. This is, is a character we aren't interested in, so we can delete it. Great. So now we have um, a directory, uh, and maybe I can show this. Um, let's do a new one. Um, we have a directory of uh, data that has now been labeled. So if I do tree, um, and let's try diarized audio. Um, we can see that for each of these directories, um, you know, if, while we're in the the kind of clip that's a, that's related to MS, we have a, a a lot of audio related to that is spoken by Bartlett and and some portions of audio that's spoken by Leo. Um, in the audio that was labeled response.wave, we have a bunch of audio that was labeled by Bartlett and a bunch of audio that was labeled by uh, that was said by Leo, and and so on, right? Bartlett, Charlie. So we we have directories with kind of this recording name and then subdirectories within those that is the character like the speaker right that that spoke that that the that, that word. Um, great so now that that's done we can go back to Jupiter lab and work through the next part of this um, specifically this next part is about kind of expanding and kind of building the data set that we just created so while we labeled the data it now needs to be kind of converted and made kind of training ready um, so again this is the exact same code um, with minor changes um, from the readme. So in the readme, we give it specific directories. So let's say that our example, I think our examples specifically include directory zero, directory one, directory two, and so on. Um, here, we're just kind of saying, uh, we want you to look in the diarized audio directory and then find all the subdirectories. Um, and that's that's the diary, that's the labeled diarized audio that we want you to use. Um, and secondly, uh, we, we've, we um, there's a couple of additions here. So in the readme, we have this idea, We we, Kind of talk about this idea that if you have a large if you have large variation in the number of data points you have for each label, it might be good to um, turn this equalized data within splits on and off. And I'll show what that is. And then generally, right, it's important to have kind of reproducible data splits, so you have the seed parameter as well. Um, so I will go ahead and show that process. We can see what it does. Um, so what happens is it makes a new directory called chunked audio. This is kind of the prepared set, and you can see it's just a ton. It's basically all of um, those audio files from each of those subdirectories combined into a single directory, but they've been chunked up into really, really small segments that are kind of more useful for training. Um, additionally, it tries to find training tests and validation splits that are optimal um, or that contain, uh, each split has to contain all of the speakers um, to a decent kind of agreed amount. Um, and I can show that this, you know, what this equalized data without splits does if I turn this to false. Um, then we can see that Bartlett has a, has a, a lot more data uh, or examples than Charlie or Leo does, right? Um, and so, if you have relatively even data or data examples or data points, then you don't really need that. But if you 
if you have really varied, then you should probably turn this on. Um, and we can see that we get right back to kind of our, our set that is pretty equal. Um, so now that we've done that and we have this new directory, what I'm going to do is just start the training. Um, and we can see again, this is just like the uh, readme has, is once you have this kind of uh, this prepared data set, you can just go right into training. Um, and so I will do that. So first we have the training model, uh, we have the model training, and um, this will do pretty much everything for you. There are some options to this train parameter, but um, it, it should handle most of it. Um, and it's going to start the process. And we can see it's already started this like training box. Um, so we will quickly see what happens. So it, it already completed its first epoch with you know as little data that we provided, um, and the accuracy was about 51% uh, accurate. And it'll just keep going. This looks like because we have such a small data set, it'll take less than a minute to kind of train the entire thing. Um, but we'll let it finish. One of the things that you'll notice um, if you've never used uh, PyTorch or like uh, fine-tuned a, a transformer from using the Hugging Face system is it makes a directory with the with the model. So um, once this is done training, all of the, like the best model will be stored here along with all the checkpoints. So we can see that um, there are already checkpoints saved in here, and it has the whole log. Um, but once it's done, it will it'll uh, actually store the best one in the base level, so that you don't need to go digging around for it. We can see that from uh, the the Jupyter Lab kind of notebook. We can see that uh, as the epochs went on, the best accuracy we got was about eighty percent or seventy nine percent. And it stored our, the best model to that directory, which I just showed you. Finally, let's evaluate the model that we just trained um, with a different uh, part of the data set. So right, we, we specifically constructed a data set with train, test, and validation splits. Um, and this validation split is actually, it only contains uh, data examples from an event or from a recording that wasn't used in either the training or the testing. Um, so it's very, very important right, to make sure that you aren't just learning things about the microphone or about specific words or something like that, but you're trying to learn the actual speaker's voice. And so we specifically hold out um, and stratify by a few uh, variables. Um, it looks like our model is OK. It could obviously be better. Um, right? So it looks like the, the model probably needs more Charlie examples because it thinks that, um, or maybe better Charlie examples, because it thinks that you know it's trying to predict uh, Leo, even though the true label is Charlie. Um, but for Bartlett and Leo, it looks OK. Um, but again, this was a very, very small data set. It had eight, <laughs> it had eight audio recordings um, that were maybe three minutes long each. Um, but we were pretty quickly able to set up uh, and create a data set ready for training um, and also a model that was trained. So, um, uh, and that's it, right? Um, once you have this model, you can go through and apply it to new to new audio um, if you're if you're comfortable with it. I, I mean, I if it was up to me, I would add a lot more data. But uh, for a quick example, um, you know, you can go ahead and apply apply it. Um, but that's it. So thanks, and I hope you find this helpful, and I hope you know you're able to train models.